painting. I know I said I was going to do another painting video for you guys. Um, I got totally sidetracked and just had a later night than usual. Um, so we are doing this in the morning with daylight savings time um, and doing a little bit more painting. And we're back at some giant painting. We're going to keep going on this model, which is looking pretty super dope. Um, oh, I didn't get the color that I needed out of here. Oh, a good venue, I think. I think I need to go a different route with the color. Um, I don't think. Oh, actually, no. I think I do have it. We're going to see if this works. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Right there, no, it's got it's got the right consistency. All right. Mm, no, actually. Although I mixed that up. Mm, that's a dummy. Yeah, that's not looking too good over there. Oh, maybe I was able to reconstitute some of that. I'm probably gonna have to get, I have to re get some more paint. Oh no, it's working. Wow. Okay. yellow a little bit more uh, get the yellow a little bit more constituted so I can start painting some of this robe might go with the orange still. I don't know, I kind of do like the yellow. I don't know why. Oh, geez, I'm painting things that are not supposed to be yellow. I don't know why. I always like the, the yellow rope as a color. I don't know. We're like I said, we're gonna do a really a little bit of a shorter uh, painting video tonight because I am super duper exhausted just from my day. Um, but we'll we're gonna start. Uh, we'll do a little bit of detail work on. The Mega Gargan, and then I was going to just do a little bit of basing work. Um, a little bit of basing work on my other. Model. Whoops. Which is going to be our second so-called giant. Um, I was going to purchase some other giants online, but I don't know, I'm, I'm hesitant to do so because of um, just quite frankly, some of the um, You know, the, the, I love the model community, but I 
there's all these folks that are on Etsy and usually you can find some really cool stuff on Etsy but I don't know this this giant army idea is like still an idea in progress meaning that I you know I've, I've gone on record saying that I'm not 100% a fan of GW's um, other giants um, they both have two very big flaws. Um, one, the the other giant kit or giants that they made, which I've been, you know, I said certain things about them, and then you know everybody seems to disagree with me, which I keep saying like I'm not a fan of how. Um, they, you know, I feel they made them a little on the douche side, the, like a little bit on the, like dopey looking side or, um, so I'm not, mm, I, I don't know if I'm as big of a fan of them as model choices. Um, because I, I don't know, I don't wanna, I don't know how to say it. I'm trying to explain. Because I know, I, I tried to explain it to other people and I guess the way I explained it, it came off um, in a way that was a little bit more I don't know. I don't know the way to say it. Like, what I started to say was, uh, instead of what I said, was that they, they come off a little like, um, lean is the way to put it. They look like emaciated giants. Um, they don't look like, like, uh, you know, muscular, healthy, creatures. They look like you know, they're just or maybe that's the word I'm searching for that I keep searching for is they look um Yeah, maybe I'm trying to say they look a little, like, wimpy. Because since they look, like, so emaciated, I don't know, they don't look muscular to me. They're skinny fat. Yes, there we go. Thank you. Mr. Big Stuff. Coming in for the clutch. Yeah, they just, they look like they're... Like, even though the Gargans still look... The Gargans have the same problem. They look... You know, very... They look the same way. They look... as we've coined the phrase, skinny fat. You know, he still looks like skinny, but he still looks like massive, muscular. He, he still, to me, looks menacing, I guess is the way to put it. Whereas the other giants that they made don't come off that way.
the uh, the original giant they made, the one from the uh, not the original giant they made, the original giant they shit, what is going on tonight? Um, the original giant they made is very comical. The fantasy giant, the old fantasy giant. Um, what I was gonna say was the the other giants that they made prior to the Mega Gargans. Uh, which was the Forge World Giant. Um, he's he's a little bit of a different story. Ah, oh, Jesus. Ah. I'm going to have to go back over that. Damn it. Because I made a mistake. Um, this is what happens when I try to paint late at night. Which I, which I really should stop trying to do that because I my my eyes get tired and I sometimes start making stupid little mistakes and then the stupid little mistakes end up having me having to go back and redo this. All right, I don't know why that keeps why does my camera keep doing that? All right, sorry guys. Sorry, guys. I don't know why my camera decided to be a little uh, act up on me. I was making sure if I... I'm going to have to buy a better, I think, hub for all the stuff hooked up to my computer because right now what I'm using... Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking in on where I'm putting this rope because the rope is so annoying. Oh, cool! We got a lot of folks watching. All right, oh, guys. So really, like, you guys want to watch me paint at two in the morning? Okay. I get so many views of folks watching me this late that I I want to keep doing videos for you guys, but. It's really late. <laughs> At least 2 in the morning for me. It's probably not 2 in the morning for all of you. I'm sure some of you it's earlier because you might be international. Or even different um, parts of the world. Uh, parts of the world. Parts of the country is what I was trying to say. It's 5 p.m. where I am at. Hold Star, how are ya? Um, right, did I say that right? Hold Star, not Hold Star. Hold Star. Yeah, so everybody's on different, different time zones, which I get it. I get it, I get it. Which I'm happy. And you should totally, you should totally follow the channel if you are digging what I'm doing. Um, cause we're doing, what we're working on is, you know, for folks that don't know, this is the Mega Gargant. Um, the Mega Gargant is part of the Sons of Behemoth Army, the, uh, newer army for Age of Sigmar, uh, which if you are not aware is a 100% giant army. So yeah, all the units in this army are giants which is insane to me. Um, I want to play them so bad. Um, they are crazy, wicked, interesting. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the, sh the shtick. And then what we're, what I'm doing, uh, besides modding this model a little bit, which I have done, uh, you notice I'm using non GW models for some of the other, um, giants. So my goal is to actually have giants from all different model ranges 
So it's sort of a complete custom army using the Mega Gargan as the leader and then using other people's giants for the rest of it. Which I thought would be pretty cool. But what I am finding, which is sort of the challenge... We'll see how I like this. So we're gonna start doing some prime, some base priming. Yeah, that's no, perfect for a frost giant. Um, very nice. Um, yeah. So what I am finding, which is a little bit of the hard part, is that. Um, Uh, you know, for a lot of folks out there that may be uh, veterans at the model, at the uh, tabletop model hobby game, um, everybody's giants, ooh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Everybody's giants are like different sizes because the scales are slightly different. Um, Sons of Roly, thank you for the follow. Um, the, the, uh, the, 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 Oh, okay. I'm noticing I am getting... So I don't know if folks are... But yeah, so the problem is is that the scales are a little bit on the different side. So I've been trying to figure out, you know, how I'm going to get all of them to look and be the way that I need them to be. Um... So we're gonna we're gonna see how this goes, but but yeah, the idea was to take um, like I said, giants from all different walks of life and have them come together. Um, and there's also a custom storyline that I'm gonna have, um, which I. Th I think so far I have two of the four giants that I need figured out um, because I'm also trying to figure out who I can get some of these models from. Uh, this is a limited edition D&D model, uh, the model that I'm using right now. So this was uh, one of their collector series models. Which uh, the scale worked out pretty well um, for it to be. And I may still buy the GW uh, Giants, but like I said, um, I, I just am not a fan of. Uh, these sort of emaciated Giants. I just don't, I don't like that as a technique of of the character and I just I'm not a fan of it so we're gonna see how it goes um right, I may have to take the mega gargan out of the background because I'm noticing that the camera is going in and out of focus so I'm gonna just move him for a minute and we'll get back to some of his finer details in just in just a sec As uh, I take just a little bit of a break, because I, I know for myself, uh, I'm a fan of having like two or three models that I'm painting at the same time, because I like to sometimes take breaks from one to paint another. It's also good if you have a few things you're working on because of drying, because you have to let you know your models dry, of course. But I said, you know what? Let me just do a quick base on this, um, so that I can. start to figure out now now he's kind of doing double duty in the sense that um, I may also use him uh, in my Northern Alliance Kings of War army so that was another reason of making the Giants uh, like this this idea that all these like regional Giants sort of came together and started like wreaking havoc in uh, 
Sigmar, which is pretty close to the pretty close to the lore for the Sun the Mega Gargans and them. Uh Zarov uh, seventy six, thanks for the follow. You got that's awesome. Thank you guys for following me. Um, yeah, we're gonna paint. I'm gonna paint a lot of models. I'm, yeah, it's gonna be all over the place. Some of them are gonna be just Etsy models. Some of them are gonna be, I mean, Mantic models. Like we got, I got so much to paint. You guys are gonna see me do scenery. Like so, I always tell people like it's so good that you guys are are getting in the habit of following me because. I got a lot going on and you'll know exactly when we're live and when you can come in and contribute because uh, not only do I want you guys to see awesome, cool model painting stuff, uh, but I'd love for you guys to ask me questions and, 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 you know, I'd love to hear what you are working on. You know, what are, what are some things that you're working on? What's on your painting table? What's your next project? You know, I'm always a fan of uh, hearing that stuff and what, you might be uh, jumping into. And for folks that are not aware, um, I'm using the, so I'm using contrast paints. Uh, I've become a really big fan of them. Uh, I still do also use traditional GW paints as well. Um, but I, I love the contrast system. It's, it's served me well. And I, I'm getting a lot of really good, um, uh, getting a lot of really good traction with them. So, and like I said, well, I'm just looking to base this out and then I'm going to let it dry while I jump back over to my mega gargants and, you know, just getting this whole, uh, giant army underway. Uh, Fluski Walker 91, what's up? So, uh, I'm taking a slight break from the Mega Gargant. I'm gonna, he's coming back. I'm gonna bring him back on camera in a minute. Um, but I wanted to base out my Frost Giant, get his, uh, start getting his skin tone in, which he is number two in the Giant Army arsenal. Uh, and then I will hopefully be getting a few of the other giants that I want to. Yeah, so uh, I think, uh, not to spoil, but... Uh, we're gonna, I believe the next one I'm gonna get is a fire giant. Um, and then I'm on my tree grind still. Okay. Yeah, my goal, I mean, we're going to do a few other things. I also want to get my, um, I want to get some Marvel Crisis Protocol models painted for you guys. Like, I want to get a few different things uh, in the works, but. Like I said, I just wanted to start just getting his base skin tone in. Now, as you can see, unlike a GW model, he's not, um, he's got a lot, he does have detail, um, there is detail in this model, but it's not as much detail as our Gargan has. So, they, you know, this being a D&D &D model, it's a little bit more lower. What? 
he's saying Wildwoods? I'm, I'm confused. I, I think he's saying Wildwoods. Possibly. And again, what, what you guys will start to notice, and I'm going to start to do this a little bit. Um, so you can see already just how nice that contrast paint has been um, in giving us some muscle tone right off the bat without me having to do too much. And I'm just reinforcing some of that right now. Uh, it's also going to help to make it a little less um, splotchy. So uh, once you see me revise it, we'll get a lot of that, that brush stroke out. Um, and that's the mistake that a lot of people make with contrast. And that's why a lot of people will use contrast. And then they will abandon it very quickly. Um, because they don't understand that you have to go back over it. Um, it's meant to be a paint that applies light. Um, you can use that media tone to thicken it. Um, but I like using it the way I do, which is putting that light prime coat on and then going back over it later to create variation, tone, and color. And you can see just in the like little bit that we just did that, like, beautiful tone um, and just really does live up to its expectation that if you you know not I'm not gonna do that in this case because I want this model to to be a little bit more robust um, in its detail and its paint because um, you know what what I, I say it all the time but it's even more so true in this in this particular example um, you know, every one of my models is a calling card. So when I show up at, let's say, an event or I show up with my army somewhere, uh, when we can do those things again and the world, you know, is back to being a little bit different, um, You know, I want to make sure that my army that my army lives up to my painting, um, you know, credentials, because people are going to see that and be like, "Whoa, I love what you did there!" Like, and then I can say, "Ooh, I'm a commissioned painter. Would you like something similar, or would you like me to paint your army for you, or or?" characters i think that that's really where it's at like if you're gonna and i say that all the time to people like if you if you want i like doing that for people i think it's a much better value statement for a lot of people which is to uh to do commissions and to paint either larger models for your army or or signature characters for the army because that's where i don't know to me that's where I think a lot of people would want to spend the money. Um, because things like infantry and, um, you know, the base units that you have in your army, um, you know, you may want to pay someone. Uh, obviously, if you want a particular maybe idea or custom paint for the army, I see. Thanks, mate. Sons of Raleigh. Okay. Oh, I guess for the for the thanks for the follow. I don't know what just happened. 
I think I just did a Twitch thing that I don't know that I did. So, Sons of Raleigh, you're welcome. I don't know what the thank you was for. Um, I mean, I saw the rating notice, so I think... I think that had something to do with that, but uh, but I'm I'm confused by the rating the the rating notice because I'm doing like painting, so I don't know why. But I know that there's other aspects of Twitch with memberships and such. But yeah, I was saying, I um, that to me is where it's at for a lot of folks, um, where they can, you know, they can have someone like myself, you know, do those special characters or bigger units. So you have someone commission paint out a showcase element of your army, um, and then what that does is it allows you to have essentially the models you really like painted really well um, and then you know it also helps with the cost because depending on the level of paint you want and how big your army is you know that could be a larger proposition That could be a larger proposition for you know your expenses at the time because you know the model the model game and the model um the hobby itself is not a cheap hobby so the models themselves are pretty high cost then uh the books the other things that you may need to play so you know you i i don't discredit anybody for you know not necessarily um, taking up maybe an artist or a commission painter that you know or maybe somebody you know in the hobby that uh, really is into painting you know I can understand that the proposition of paying them you know now to in addition to everything else you had to go through actually paint the model for you and that's an additional cost it could be very overwhelming um, cost wise it's um, so that's why, like, for a lot of people, I sometimes recommend, why don't we just do your special characters, um, and we can just go that route. Now, of course, that, that only really works if you want your special characters to be, well, A, a little bit different, and, um, C, you know, if you don't necessarily want... You know, you, you don't necessarily want something maybe um, as custom for your paint job. So uh, it's an interesting balance when it comes to commission stuff. Oh, did I just do the wrong thing? It's hard because it almost, yeah, I feel like it should be. Yes, no, 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 I didn't do the wrong thing. It's just that it's, it's interesting the way that they sculpted it. You see a little bit less of the arm on this side, but I guess that's because of the way it's tilted. Um, you see very little of it on this side. Okay. But yeah, you do see through those holes, and then we have the skull itself. And I don't think that's true for the other side, though. All right, cool. Now for the face, we got that ear. I will be doing some other stuff in there. But yeah, that um that we were using the ethermatic blue. I think that looks so good for frost. I like using it for ice or frost. 
effects. I think it looks real, real good. Oops. And again, I'm, I'm doing this because I think it's kind of cool. Like, I, I know I'm sort of... What's the, what's the word? I'm not going to say that I'm going against the mega... the. Sons of Behemoth lore, because I look kind of am, but um, um, uh, I wanted to do. I just wanted to do something a little bit more interesting. Um, and like I said, this this all stems from. Well, it's stems from kind of a few things that happened. Um, in my in model building for me, the first one being. So the the big thing that happened was that they, you know, they, um, Manta Games came out with an amazing giant, uh, and unfortunately, just due to the way that things were, and and you know what I think is a pretty common tale for a lot of us who are into, you know, specialty stuff, stuff that you know, isn't part of the beaten track. Um, what basically happened was um, I, uh, I was really gung-ho about getting this. Uh, so, so Manta came out with this really cool giant. I didn't start the story properly at all. Um, they came out with this really cool giant um, because we are all dealing with a lot of shortages and uh, you know, different hurdles for maybe getting or procuring things that we're looking to get. Um, the model, the giant model sold out very quickly. Um, they are not necessarily making more. Uh, and like many of us who play these ho th this hobby, you know, a lot of our products uh, and a lot of these companies are located overseas. Um, so what that translates to most of us in was that um, at least at the beginning of all of the, oh, come on, man, of all of the unpleasantness, you know, and the pandemic and everything we were dealing with, um, a lot of these companies basically stopped shipping, um, you know, as many companies did because they had to worry about the pandemic and, and, things happening and there was a shortage of places to print there was a shortage of workers to work on the things to print so all this stuff happened um so you know what that turned translated into was i didn't get mantix giant um and so i was very sad by that so what uh so what ended up happening was now part of why i wanted the mantic giant was because at the time uh and still at this time they have um some pretty cool campaign missions where you can use the giant and uh create some really fun games where multiple um you know where multiple players can play and uh basically have to take down the giant um, which is pretty cool. It's, it's a, a different way to play. It's a, it's a scenario-based way to play Kings of War uh, in their system. So I was like, ooh, I want to try that out because I have these awesome Kings of War guys that I got. I started getting some armies because I want to do battle reports and all that cool stuff. Um, and Manta Games, who was nice enough to start sending me some of these things for review, uh, it was all going pretty good. Um, and, you know, by no fault of their own and... and not at all because they they've been awesome and they've been so accommodating and just like so open to uh getting me stuff that i could look at review and do um like i said they just sold out of the model so i couldn't get one um so then i was like ooh, i gotta get like if i want to do this mode uh or if i want uh, if i want to play this uh way with kings of war i'm gonna have to get my hands on a giant and then uh set the clock forward a little bit and then i was at my uh local gaming shop um which is undiscovered realms which i always like to give those guys a big shout out and i do want to in this video as well anytime i'm 
painting GW models or part, or having a video that has to do with GW stuff. Uh, they are my go-to for GW, so uh, I always like to give them a proper shout-out. Again, they are Undiscovered Realms. Uh, if you are in the New York area, uh, you can definitely check them out. Um, if not, they do have a wonderful website, uh, which is undiscoveredrealms.com. You can order from their website. They do... Um, they deliver anywhere, um, and they have all manner of cool stuff. They have, um, you know, not only this uh, D minis like this D and D mini that I'm painting right now, uh, the behemoth that I the mega mega gar the behemoth, the mega gar the mega gargant that I was painting previously, who will be coming back on camera in just a moment. Um, he, he also was purchased there. Um, so I was in their shop and I was like, Ooh, I saw this guy and I was like, Ooh, I didn't know that. Um, first of all, I didn't know that D and D did these like premium collector minis. Um, and then I didn't know they did some of these larger formatted characters. I know cause they're and and I should preface this their scale is a little is much smaller uh, their scale in general is smaller than GW scale um, so I was like ooh I don't know if this would you know I don't know if this would completely work for what I'm trying to do um, and I'll be quite honest I actually kind of took a chance but then when I saw and went online and saw the size, I was like, ooh, this will work. And then that spurred an idea, which was, this worked out so well, and I'm so happy that I have this model. Maybe it would make more sense to do something kind of cool and build um, a whole army of giants out of other companies' model kits. And then, um, you know, so then... I'm now in talks with Mantic to get there. Of course, they're giant. Um, but then I also started to go on to Etsy and other places and started to find all of this other stuff. Um, but like I said, the trick that I've been running into or the tricky part is that when I go and look them up online, it feels like their scale is much, uh, is something to be, very careful with so like there were a couple of giants i was like "Ooh, i really like the sculpt and how these guys look but then when i actually did the math and figured out like how big they were going to be they were going to be like a third of the size of the mega gargant and i'm like they can't be a third of the size of the mega gargant like they're going to look again they're going to look real small um or, or they're going to just they're not going to look right so you know the sweet spot is about four and a half inches that's what i need the giants to be so that's why I think I got to beat on one more. Um, I know the Mantic Giant is going to be big enough because um, they they essentially made the Mantic Giant. The Mantic made that giant, and then Games Workshop was like, "Whoa, it sold!" Like they got a giant model that sold so well that they made the Mega Gargans. Um, they had hinted at a giant army, and they were like playing around with the idea, but. It's more, it, 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 it more is them trying to cash in a little bit on that direct idea. It's funny. I, I said, I'm going to go back and paint the Mega Gargant. And then I just, I'm getting into this model now. I'm surprised nobody out there is like, this is very Game of Thrones. Because it's very much, it is very much like the, the White Walkers. I, I am kind of thinking of that while I'm painting this. Or very much Thor, Frost Giants kind of thing. Which is, which is probably more what I'm thinking about. Doing the more traditional Asgardian Ice Giant. And this is where contrast paints like really do shine. Um, because you're seeing how... It's really, it's already doing like a lot of the work for me. And then I'm just going to come in and revise that. 
because right now, like I said, I the way I use contrast is I use it to block out colors first, and then I go back in and I revise, and you know that's when I'm going to use potentially other uh, Citadel paints. I'm going to do some mixing, create some color palettes, um, you know, doing all kinds of stuff like that, or or coming back in with a dry brush technique, um, all all of that good stuff. But like that's what's so cool, and and again. Going back to what I said before, what's so nice about these paints is that if for some reason you're in a clinch and you want to just get it done, they they that one coat that one coat dries in such a way that you can 100% use it. You know, now personally, what I was thinking for the cloak or the clothing is I could do this same tone that I did on the boots, but then do a darker trim outside, which I think I'm probably going to do that. I don't know. Or I could do. Mm. Or I could do like brown pelts, but still do the. I, I don't know. Maybe the Gilliman to give the pelts like a brown, so it, it, it so that I could also work with the Northern Alliance for Kings of War. Because I'm trying to think, I'm like trying to think of a couple of different cal color palettes. So that I'm sort of doing one model, but I'm I'm building it for everything. Um, so I'm I'm sort of trying to map out my colors while I'm. Don't drown this. I want to do a light. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. I hope you can. But there's like a texture to that helmet. Because although this is a frost giant, it's got a it, it really does have that northern influence or north north's influence like the tr like you would what you would find out of the pages of Thor or or an Asgardian frost giant. Because although the Marvel Cinematic Universe made them look a little different um, in the traditional Thor comic books, they were not. They did not look like that. Yeah, I'm not filming the smaller brush, but I'm just trying to. Really, what I'm doing here is I'm just. I'm playing around with different colors because I want to see like what color because obviously he's a frost giant so I'm trying to I'm trying to stick in a cool color range so so giving him a little bit more blue and playing with it we're gonna have some other colors that are gonna pop out um, but I have an idea of where I want to go with the color scheme and then what's also gonna be true of this is it's going to emulate the mega gargan so you're gonna see some of the same colors you know what actually i'm gonna wait for that because if i try to do that with that color wet it's not gonna look very good skeleton horde which is always my like standard if i got if i got um you know things on the model that are bones or something i was thinking of doing this gray I gotta do a little bit. I gotta do blue on that side, but I think it's cooler if it's if it's got a color to it. 
because I think it's going to play off the model in a, in a very cool way. I might put some snow effects on top of this, which is probably what I'm going to do. Uh, so I have the GW like uh, flock snow, which I can I can play around with. I also have the texture for the base, which I probably get, I might do that. So it'll look like snowfall or ice is built up on him, um, which I think would look amazing and really cool. So I'm I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. change out that I'm trying to push this uh, I'm really trying to push this uh, trying to push this uh, the skeleton horde contrast um, like to the max uh, and it's because it, uh, what I find happens and that's uh, that's a good uh, tidbit for a good tidbit for anybody that's using contrast if your contrast paint when you open it up starts to look like a traditional citadel paint um then that pretty much means that the, that it's gone it's 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 over with it's done it's it's on its last legs because it's odd but that's what actually happens to it when it starts to dry out when when uh the When the uh, when the contrast paints dry out, they just become sludge. So they actually get more opaque. They get thicker. Um, so you will start to have a variation, and you'll get much much darker tones um, than when you have the 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 contrast in the right form. So you have to be real real careful. Yeah. See, like that. Well, actually, that's really bad. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use that. Yeah, so you can see what, I, what I'm what i trying to do is I'm trying to, to water down. I'm basically trying to use water to loosen the contrast to add the water back. Um, and I'm not worried about it because I have more of this contrast paint. Um, I got in the habit during the quarantine that any time I ran out of a contrast paint, uh, I'd buy at least two more of it um, so I could just keep going and wouldn't have it because even now certain things are hard to get. Um, funny enough, one of those being the um, the actual like primer for these models. So the primer that's that GW sells is still really, really hard to find. Um, my my local shop has not gotten primer back in. Um, so I just tried to buy like lots of cans of it. Um, it's also why I, I got in the habit of also like priming every model I own. So I just pre prime everything when I build it. So I can just pull it out of the box that I'm keeping it in that I'm waiting to paint and just get it all painted. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a little frustrating in that regard. You know, but like I said, that's what we're all dealing with. We're all dealing with um, holdups, um, problems with shipping, all that stuff. have to skedaddle I think and realize the time but uh, we got pretty far on him and uh, he's looking pretty good you know so we got his basic skin tone done we're getting those details done on him we're gonna keep going in there and building up that so that's where our frost giant for our sons of behemoth army got to and then what we started to do on our mega gargant Whoa. 
so you guys can see what he's starting to look like. Um, just really worked on some of the, the, the ropes starting to build out some of this detail. You know, we're going to keep building out that detail on him. Um, but he is looking pretty intimidating, pretty scary, um, pretty awesome. And I think once the two of them are done, it's going to be a pretty intimidating, really awesome army. Um, and I'll bring those elements, like I said, into it. But that's my that's my idea. You guys can see we I got his eyes painted. So you can see how he's a little bit more menacing. Um, and I love this. This was a great addition. So I put some goblins on there. I took some of the bits from his model kit. So it looks like there's just dead bodies sprung around the face. Uh, I love the little comic relief of the goblin just running in fear and terror because the gargan is coming, um, shambling through the the horde. Um, and I just love the detail. But again, we'll, we'll tidy all this up. It's going to get a lot better. Um, and you guys can see a little bit, but it's going to keep going. And I may work a little bit off camera on him, too, just to get them a little further along so you guys can see the progress and, and see where we're getting to. But uh, I'm really happy with this idea. I think it's going to be really, really cool to get it on the table when we're done. Um, but, yeah, I need to sleep because i got to do some work tomorrow. Um, and like I said, as always, thank you all for coming and seeing me. Um, the support that you guys give is amazing. The fact that, uh, you know, I have so many followers now and I thank you all for following me. Uh, like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm, I mean, it's kind of cool. You guys are basically seeing a gaming company build. Um, so my hope is to be as awesome and wonderful as some of the bigger names out there, uh, both in the studio, in my house that I'm creating, which I'm working on bit by bit, um, the literal models. The literal terrain so we can start doing full programs full things i have a lot of really great ideas up here on uh, that content will be coming but i just got to get through painting up a lot of minis a lot of stuff um and you guys are going to see all of it you're going to be here for it so um as always thank you um if you have not followed and, and like what you've seen like the conversation like the painting want to learn more um and, and of course my painting videos the real goal of them is to teach you guys how to paint as well to see technique to talk through it, uh, to help you with painting problems that you might be having, as I have a few people that have followed me now uh, and are with me, which I really appreciate it. I hope those suggestions have worked out and your, uh, you know, your um, projects are looking awesome, um, which it sounds like they are. Um, and the idea is, um, you know, also to, to give everyone out there a really big distraction uh, so everybody can think about something else because we've had such a crazy year and for all of us who are in hobby and gaming and all the all of these things, you know, we're I know we're all jonesing and hoping to get back in the swing because I know my local place is closed. I'm sure other folks are experiencing that too. Um, and we just want to get back to playing. We want to get back to having fun. Um, and at the same time, there's all this really cool stuff coming out, like the Mega Gargan. I have the Silent King, which I have to do a build video for you guys and a review. I haven't. It's sitting here. <laughs> For 40k um but yeah just getting back into the swing of things is so hard um and then on top of that i also have my own independent comic book and art which we will be getting some more drawing and illustration back on the channel it's been a while uh, i have some really cool ideas and things that i've built i've purchased um that i'm going to use and uh just get you guys back into the process uh my schedule changed and it was hard for me to do the daily drawings anymore so i'm going to get my patreon way way back on track um, but, you know, that Patreon, although it is art related, um, does help to support this channel because all the proceeds from that are going to help me to build uh, merch and other things that I want to be doing. Um, so if you can check out the links below and follow that um, and, and become a Patreon, that's an awesome way to support us as well. Of course, simply just following, liking and sharing is another way. Uh, being here live when we do videos is always a very cool way to help us um, and so forth. So. Please, uh, thank you. And again, uh, I hope to see you at the next video. I hope to see you uh, in addition. If you want, check out our other videos. Uh, also, if you have a YouTube account, checking out YouTube and subscribing there. Right now, YouTube's just archiving the stuff I do on Twitch, uh, which I got to pop a bunch of stuff up there. Um, but the um, 
eventually there will be some content on there and i will be doing some live events on there i just haven't gotten a chance to do that yet um because i'm really focusing on twitch right now and the stuff that we're doing um but if you could check those links out please my website is another place where you can also check out my original artwork um you can purchase artwork for me you can contact me for commissions you can contact me for painting commissions that's another monetary way to support all that money goes back to the channel for equipment for materials for models for stuff um all of that uh you know with the exception of and i don't have a mantic game model here but i did speak to mantic before with the exception of mantic games and the folks over at undiscovered realms who helped me with some of my gw stuff uh, companies are not lining up to send me stuff just yet. Uh, we're getting better. I'm getting some folks, um, but it's not there yet. So that monetary support really does help, and it gets me closer to my goal of doing this on a full-time basis for y'alls uh, rather than what I'm doing now, which is a daytime job that I would love to uh, you know, change to a part-time with a funner career, <laughs> and you guys can definitely help with that. Um, thank you all again. Please stay safe, wash your hands, and please respect all the folks on this planet because without all of us working together, we're never going to figure it out. Don't be a mega guardian. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, be accepting. Don't, go, don't, don't walk onto somebody's land and start beating everybody to death. We need to find out how we can support each other together because all the ideas and all the places in the world, if we put that all together, I'm sure we can create some really crazy crap. Um, think about it this way. All this stuff came from the UK. It was people in the UK that thought this was really cool, and then it got here to America, and we were able to play with it. So, you know, we think of it in gaming terms, but let's be nice to everybody. Respect cultures, respect people. I don't care if you're blue, purple, green, or even a different color. Um, everyone should be respected, and everyone should be given the rights of everyone else and we should live a life where everyone is accepted and wonderful and can just be good to each other so all right guys I've, i'll jump off of my soapbox and go back to my funness and i hope you come back for the funness and we will see you at the next video thank you so much and of course please stay tuned for other video game news since we have a lot of stuff coming to us in the next couple of weeks I'm going to try to get a PS5. By the way, I said there was going to be a YouTube live event. That's going to be one of them, which is me online trying not to kill myself, trying to get a PS5. So, um, wish me luck. All right, take care, everybody. We'll see you very, very soon and hope to see you at all of our other videos. All right, take care.